employees of IKEA, what are some of the worst family meltdowns you have seen? I work at a mats of IKEA store in Australia. For a lot of people it's their first time in IKEA, so by the time they get to my section they start to panic, because they aren't used to the maze-like layout. There are a lot of breakdowns. Usually small children who want to go home. Seriously there's so many parent wandering around with their 5 year olds at 9pm on a school night. Go home. Anyway, the most memorable breakdown I dealt with was when I was working in home organization. This man marched up to me, phone in hand and family in tow. He wants to buy a certain clothes rack, but he can't find it anywhere in this stupid store. Alright mate, I'm happy to help you out. Although I'm not liking the attitude, he shows me a picture on his phone. A screenshot from a website with no context. I haven't seen that clothes rack before. Either it's very new, very old, or not something that we stock. I ask if he knows the name of it. No that's your job. He's getting even more worked up now. But I can't search with just an image. I check our store's website and I can't find the darn clothes rack anywhere. I ask if he was sure he looked at store locations website specifically. Not all IKEA stock the same stuff. Shocking I know. Immediately I can tell he feels insulted. Of course he looked at the right website. I activate dumb sales girl mode and ask him to show me. He pulls up the website and there is a clothes rack. Quite clearly on target.com.au. He notices and storms off wordlessly. I got immense pleasure watching him get lost and do a couple loops through the store before finding the exit. Seriously though, frick people who are proven wrong and then just leave with no apology. I used to get this when I worked in a call center. Our number was one digit away from Dodo Internet's number. So people would call and immediately launch into a tirade of abuse because their internet isn't working. After finally getting a word in, I'd tell them they've got the wrong number and they would just hang up immediately. No apology for screaming down the phone. Even though I'm definitely not at fault. No apology for calling me in a twit before I've even had the chance to speak. No, they just hang up. I hate people who do this. Not a family, but relevant I think. I work in the bistro area and I once had a customer scream and threaten a co-worker when he was told he couldn't get a cup for water. We only have one cup in the bistro, it cost one dollar and is counted as inventory, so we can't give them out for free. When my coworker told the guy this, he flipped out said IKEA is pure trash and we are operating illegally by not providing him water, we aren't there's a water fountain to the right. He begins to call my co-worker a piece of trash, approaches me and ask for a cup. I tell him the same thing which only angers him further. Once I point out the water fountain nearby, he says he won't use it because he isn't a peasant and says he'll come back to deal with me and my co-worker for trying to profit off his dehydration. Needless to say, I never saw him again and my co-worker and I shared a good laugh. This just hit home. I cashier in the restaurant, our water dispensers on the fountain aren't working, and haven't been for a week now. We have bottled water available, as well as ice and hot water, free, along with the dozen other beverage options available up there, but you'd think I murdered someone the way some people react to the water being down. Even after I tell them all the options, they just stare at me blankly, or get grumpy. We needed a new mattress. My now wife insisted that we pay the $99 for delivery. I was adamant that I could get it home on the roof rack. I strapped the mattress to the roof of the car, ratchet straps across all four corners. Freaking thing wasn't going anywhere. We get in the car and up to take surface streets home instead of taking the highway. Everything's going great, but there is one stretch where the speed limit is 50 miles per hour. We are driving along. And a big truck flies by, and immediately after it passes us, I see the mattress fly off the car in the rear view mirror. Holy freaking molly I'm backing up on the road, and come to the mattress. I did do a fantastic job strapping it to the roof rack. Problem is that the mattress took the roof rack with it. It's still tied to the mattress. We hoist it back on the roof, and take it slow to a gas station. Restrap the mattress, straps going through the car this time, and get it home. There's a small cut on the underside of the mattress and some gravel in the protective plastic cover. Otherwise, no real harm done. 
My wife still brings it up every time we go to Ikea. So, we are paying for delivery, right? Edit. Also, since the roof rack got messed up and surprisingly didn't damage the car, I called Yakima. They recommended not carrying stuff like mattresses slash plywood for that very reason, but they did replace the roof rack for free. So, we are paying for delivery, right? Did I get the mattress home or not? Yeah. Get the rope. Super late to thread, and not an employee, and also this wasn't my own family, but I think it counts. I went to Ikea last year with two friends of mine, a husband and wife, who own a pickup truck, and could haul stuff. I needed exactly two things, a desk and an office chair, and they were just going to look around while I shopped. I walked into the store, picked out a desk and a chair, and wrote the numbers down. In and out of the office section in 90 seconds. Too late. Their attention had already been grabbed, and they spent the next 20 minutes discussing potential couches, chairs, dressers, beds, etc., all of which culminated in my friend saying the single worst thing he could have said in the moment. This will be such a pain to move. We are moving. Why are we moving? You know I've always wanted to move to Colorado. Then why did I just leave the job I loved for the more permanent job here? Holy moly, the flugets were opened. What followed was no less than a 15 minute screaming argument in the midst of IKEA, which continued through the warehouse, through the checkout line, and into the parking lot. The argument started over him wanting to move and her wanting to stay, but quickly progressed to jobs, school, families, children, and ended when she snatched the keys from his hand, screamed a torrent of obscenities at both of us, and drove off. If you've never had to call someone to come pick you up with a couple of boxes because your friend just got divorced in the middle of an IKEA parking lot and your ride drove off, I can't recommend it. Desk still holds up, though. It's always fun when your furniture comes with an origin story. Who needs a handmade oak antique desk that was George Washington's sister's brother-in-law's cousins when you have an IKEA desk that caused a divorce? I have two. I was working in the kitchen accessories department and this middle aged guy asked me where the cheap white plates are. So these are the lowest price plates that come in one color and are sold straight off the palette. But they changed the color from white to light beige a month ago. I explain this and this guy starts raising his voice at me, telling me he owns a restaurant and that I go back there and bring him more white plates. At this point I know I'm not dealing with a rational person here, but I go to the computer and check if there isn't in fact a pallet of the stuff, just so he sees I've tried helping him, even shown him the big fat zero on the screen. He gets red in the face and starts telling me how I'm personally responsible for the gas he spent driving here on his Audi A8. Ask me if I know how much gas an Audi A8 burns. He's yelling now, the whole floor is looking our way, and I'm doing my best to not laugh, but I realized I'm already smiling, and that ticked him off even more. The convo went something like this. You're gonna pay for the gas I spent driving here. I doubt that sir. Listen here kid. I'm gonna drive back home. Load up all the freaking white plates into my car and dump them all in front of your freaking store and you're gonna pay me every last cent for the damages. That's a good idea. I wasn't even trying to be rude I just really wanted this guy to do this. But then he asked for my manager, yelled at him basically repeating everything including his Audi A8 gas mileage, everything. He ended up buying the light beige plates. The second one was, when I was on my third day working at IKEA, still wearing the I'm new here badge and this lady asks me where do we keep the escargo plates. It was my third day, but I already knew we don't carry that, and said I don't even think I saw one, before in my life. She goes, if I was your boss I'd fire you on the spot, and stomps away. What did I do lady? I was in the Vancouver IKEA, and they have a children's play area that was packed. There must have been 100 kids in there, some being watched from outside, and some completely unattended. Without warning, the power went out. There were emergency lights, but the play area was still quite dark. The kids all started shrieking and crying and running around in the darkness. The power probably only out for 2 minutes, but the chaos was spectacular. When the lights came back on, it looked like a battleground. Some kids were bruised and bloodied, some had the thousand yard stare of a war veteran. There were a few who had bonded together in the tunnels and refused to leave. 
some were missing entirely, they must have escaped in the shadows into the well furnished maze that is IPR. The meatballs were good too. Overall 10 out of 10, but the bar was set high, and no future visits could compare to that eventful day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more videos like this. Don't forget to leave your stories in the comments below.